Welcome back and thank you for staying with us. Mkonto Esizwe, Mandela's army, documents the experiences of former MK combatants. It offers a multi-generational contemplation on the overwhelming urge to engage in armed struggle for the liberation of South Africa embraced by the youth. The documentary is on at the Joburg Film Festival tomorrow. For more on this conversation, we are now joined by the film director and the screenwriter, that's Wabzola Masego. Uh, Mr. Masego, a pleasure to have you on the program this evening. Uh, firstly, tell us a bit more about uh, what inspired this uh, documentary and uh, what made you or what inspired you to chronicle the lives of uh, some of these uh, ANC combatants. Um, thanks for having me. Firstly, let me be very clear that I, I am not the director of this documentary. Ah, I see. Um, I have failed to um, raise money and tell my own story of Umkonto Esizwe sure. in South Africa. So the story is directed, the film was directed by a colleague of mine, Cameroonian director, her name is Oswald Lewat. Mm -hmm. She is in South Africa, she'll be at the Joburg Film Festival. Um, and I think, well, we work together. I was more of like a facilitator mm -hmm. as well as one of the um, subjects, you know, introducing her to all the... Um, a and the MK members. I think um, what, what really drove her was, number one, yeah. um, she was fascinated to, um, to, to find out that as someone who's a Pan-Africanist, an artist, a writer, a filmmaker, um, um, she had never heard about Umkondo Esizwe. Mm. She had never heard that um, South Africa had an had a armed struggle. So she was very, very intrigued by that and started doing more and more research. Yeah. Um, another thing is, um, you know, outside in the world, people know Mandela as this pacifist, mm -hmm. um, as a guy, as, as a man who, um, you know, uh, negotiated a peaceful transition to South Africa. And uh, very few, I, I think um, Mandela's legacy as a revolutionary, because yeah. uh, Mandela was the first commander in chief of Mkonto Esizwe, mm -hmm. Mandela was arrested for being, uh, for, for treason, for high treason, trying to topple the apartheid government by armed struggle. Um, so she was intrigued by that. And um, she spent four years of her life. She raised the money in France and came back and she shot. And she interviewed um, um, an, a number of MK cadres from um, Ronnie Castrils yeah, in the 60s yeah. who formed Mukonto uh, Esizu with Mandela, mm. uh, Mike Maharaj who served with Mandela on Robben Island, Mavusom Singa, Simang, who was part of the Wanki generation in 1967, mm. right through till um, my generation, um, the Young Lions, and the last generation um, in 1990. Mr. Masego, the documentary offers an intergenerational reflection on the sacrifices made by young people for the dream of this uh, free South Africa. Uh, can you discuss with us the challenges and also the rewards of capturing such a significant part of history? Well, we were all young at that time, yeah. <laughs> you know. Um, um, so, you know, when we went into MK, I was, I was um, personally, I was 18. But I think all of us were around about that age, yeah. um, in our late teens, early 20s. Um, so, you know, when, you, when I say intergenerational, um, so MK had different detachments. And basically different detachments signify the years in which you came into MK. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you have the Mandela detachment, the original, and then you have the Wanki detachment, that's Bo Chris Hani, Bo Mavusum Simang, yeah. and the others, etc., etc. June 16, um, the 80s, um, you know, so it's told, th that's what we mean by intergenerational. It's the different, it's the different um, um, cadres who mm -hmm. joined MK at different, um, um, different periods yeah. in its history. So following the premiere screening, there will be a panel discussion with uh, yourself and some of them, Kondo Esis or Kedas. What insights or even revelations can the audience expect? You know, um, for me as a storyteller, um, my job is, is to tell stories so that we don't forget. Um, I think this particular story comes at a very, very interesting time in our history as we're going for probably the most significant elections in our democracy and with um, the legacy of Umkondo Esizwe trying to be hijacked. Yeah. There's a new party called Umkondo Esizwe. That party has got absolutely nothing to do with Umkondo Esizwe. So I've come to realize when I was, you know, through this journey of this documentary, that there really were two ANCs. There's the ANC 
but was a liberation struggle. Sure. And probably the great, one of the greatest liberation struggles ever. And Umkonto Wesizwa was the armed wing of that African National Congress. Mm. Then you have the ANC of the ruling party, which unfortunately, I don't have to say anything about it. it you know, one of, among its many, many failings has been its inability to tell our own stories, mm. you know. And, um, and that's why I guess, and I learned through this, so, you know, as a storyteller, you know, I, I want these stories to survive. If you were born after 1994, you would be, you would think that the ANC is what we see now, mm. corruption, um, tenderpreneurs, uh, people getting shot, all, all, the, all the mess that they're uh, load shedding, potholes, people leaving the country, the, the rand dying, all, all, all the failures of the ANC. Mm. You would not know about the ANC pre-1994. Sure. You would not know that there were people who were prepared to die. And I believe the real true heroes and heroines are the people who gave up their lives, not for a tender, not for an RTP house, not for a job, for freedom. Mm -hmm. So it's important in this day and age where, you know, we, there's just so much crass materialism, you know, and everything happens on the Internet. Yeah. And it's all about Facebook and Instagram and how many likes and how much you can pose and money, money, money and girls, girls, girls. It's, um, it's, it's, it's a poignant reminder to a time when we're great, mm -hmm. when we're kings and queens. And that's how I like to see it. So it's an important for me, as we, it's an important reminder that we should never forget where we come from. And we must not forget who the true Umkondu Esizwe is. And, and, and be careful of those that want to steal this legacy sure. for their own nefarious political aims. I'm quite intrigued by your insights, but uh, also in the same breath, uh, what also stood out is that the, the point that you make around telling our own stories as well. So the Jobbik Film Festival showcases a diverse variety of films from around the world. Uh, how does Umkonto Sizwe Mandela's Secret Army then contribute to the festival's mission of really celebrating storytelling through the art of film? Um, well, um, the, Jobbik Arts, the Jobbik Film Festival has been, uh, has been around since 2016. Um, I had a film at the first Jobbik Film Festival. Yeah. Uh, and um, it's done a good job in exposing, um, in bringing filmmakers from around the world to here um, and showcasing films. Um, how does um, this film, Um Konto Sees with a Mandela Secret Army, um, fit into the Joburg Film Festival's um, objection? It's a film. Um, it's a film about who we are, where we come from. It's a film about our country. It's just Sarah, 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 uh, I knew I, I, I knew I would <laughs> mess that up. Um, it just so happened yeah. that the film came out now. Um, it was actually made two year, a year ago, mm -hmm. and it just came out now. And, um, you know, when politically um, there's also this MK, um, Yara Jacob Zuma, you know. But... You know, as a film, we are here as filmmakers. We are here to hold up a mirror to society. We are here to, or let me speak for myself, I am here to celebrate our heroes and heroines. I am here to celebrate blackness. Yeah. You know, we grew up with stories from Hollywood um, where, you know, there were cowboys and Indians, and we supported the cowboys. No one wanted to be an Indian. It's only when you grew up that you realize that, hey, you're an Indian. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, we grew up with the Tazan films and all that. So our whole history has been told from a Western perspective. Mm -hmm. And I believe as a filmmaker, m one of my um, passions is to retell. And you can see from the stories that I've told, mm -hmm. Sarah Bartman, Manuscripts of Timbuktu, Dram. It's about celebrating blackness, celebrating our heroes and heroines, and celebrating our heritage. And this, this film, and that's why I'm so passionate about it yeah. and, and walk to the director through it, it f falls into that category. I want us to crystallize that point. You, you have an extensive experience as a filmmaker and a screenwriter. How do you then navigate, uh, call it the responsibility of accurate, accurately portraying a historical events and individuals while still engaging audiences emotionally and intellectually as well? That's a very good question, very, very good question. 
Um, you know, I, I made a, a documentary um, many moons ago called um, The Life and Times of Sarah Bartman. <coughs> um, and um, I'm, I, I want, I'd like to turn that into a, into a film or into a miniseries. So, and I'm grappling with, you know, um, um, and, and there's a lot of films, there's a lot of stories, like I say, I'm celebrating our heroes and heroines. There's a lot of stories that I, um, that, uh, of living legends that mm -hmm. I'd like to tell. So, you know, this documentary, which is faction, fictional, I'm uh, no, sorry, which is factual yeah. and non-fiction, where you are telling, you interview people, you are telling the true story of what happened. Then there's fiction. Now, when you're doing a biography, it's a bit of, it's a mixture of both. Mm -hmm. um, you want to be true to the historical events, but you have to use creative license mm -hmm. um, for purposes of, um, the plot and for purposes of um, keeping the film um, powerful and engaging. Yeah. So we do, we do use what we call creative license. However, the, the, um, as filmmakers, we try, or I try, and I think we should try, to be as truthful to the story as possible. However, now the question comes, whose story? Mm -hmm. Whose perspective? As I said, we, I've grown up We've learned, I think, the whole of our history, African history, has been told, has been written for us, taught by us, yeah. by the West. So it's time for us to tell our stories. And I don't give a uh, hoot um, if, you know, I tell stories that offend white people. Um, they've offended black people. They've offended me and my culture long enough. So if I tell a story from my perspective or from an African perspective, or from a black perspective, I think I've done my job. However, as a, 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 but, I, but I'm not a propagandist. I mm -hmm. still want to be true to that story. So giving the example of Sarah Bartman, I have to be true if I, if I get the opportunity, um, God willing, to tell the story. Yeah. I have to be true to the facts, but I can take creative license. Mr. Masago, I thank you so much for your time. But just a quick reminder as to uh, how the film can be uh, watched at the Jobek Film Fe right. Festival. So, um, it's screening tomorrow at 3 o'clock at the Theatre on the Square. Yeah. And it's screening on Sunday, too, at um, the Rose, Sturkinico Rose Bank. So you go to um, um, www.sturkinico.com, and then there's a search button. You type in MK, and then MK will appear. Click on it, and then you follow the prompts, and you buy tickets. And you can see it at 6.30 at Cinema 7 at Sturkinico Rose Bank. You've heard it from the man himself, that is uh, Zola Masego, uh, our esteemed guest, uh, telling us a bit more about this uh, insightful documentary.